they call me the queen of self-love. This was not a title I got while I was getting my MBA at Kellogg. That did, that there was no course. <laughs> there was no course in this. This happened because um, well, I had one of those wake-up calls, you know, when you think you're going the wrong in your life and like everything is good and like, yeah, I love myself, I'm good you now, got a good job and I got a, you know, got a handsome man and I got a lot of friends and, and I really did. If you had met me 10 years ago and you had said, Christine, do you love yourself? I would have been like, yes. But self-love had never really crossed my mind and I didn't know what it was. And so when I found myself on the receiving end of a broken engagement, hours before my engagement party, and instead of kicking the guy in the face and saying, you're a jackass, we're doing this right now, right here, because you have better timing, and instead of begging this man to take me back while I was a high-paid executive at getting my MBA at the best business school in the country, I had to look at, why was that? Why was it that this woman who had so much self-esteem didn't love herself enough to value herself, to, be, to say to this guy, you know what, I'm better than this? And the answer was, Christine, you like yourself a lot. Christine, you have a lot of friends. Christine, you even have tons of self-esteem, but you don't love yourself. And when that message came down, you ever have one of those messages? It's like, you know, God, the divine rings you up and you've been hanging up the phone for like years and all of a sudden you're like, uh, yeah, I think you're kind of right. Maybe I should listen this time. And I said, you know what, you're right. I don't love myself and I don't know what that means. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, divine, I will make a promise to myself, and I made this promise 11 years ago, laying in bed by myself with a broken heart. But it was different this time because instead of it being a broken heart in which it was like I wasn't enough to be loved, my heart broke open so I could fill it with love. And I said to myself, Christine, we're going to fall in love with ourselves. I don't know how it's going to look like. I don't know how we're going to do it. I asked all my friends. They didn't know how to do it. My relatives, I'm like, well, I'll ask my mom and my grandmothers. They're, they're older. They'll know. And they said, honey, stop asking such silly questions. You know, just, just go be happy. I'm like, that's not working. It's not working. So that began my decade-long travel, which I'm here today with all of you talking about how do we actually love ourselves. And six years ago, I left my corporate job to go out into the world to actually share the message of self-love because I think it's kind of a little bit mis misunderstood. Now. I am um, wondering if any of you have ever thought that self-love is masturbation. <laughs> go ahead, you can, you know, you have my history, raise your hand, but go ahead and admit, yeah, you do that, that when you think of self-love, oh, that's, that's masturbation. And, and, and it is, you know, masturbation is a form of self-pleasure, and self-pleasure is a form of self-love. However, saying that masturbation is self-love is like saying that the teacup ride is Disneyland. Right? The teacup ride is in Fantasyland, and Fantasyland is part of Disneyland, but it's a very small piece, right? So that's number one. Number two is that self-love is not, as dictionary.com defines it, narcissism, conceit, and vanity. That's the current definition of self-love in our culture. Now, that's important because even if all of you want to love yourselves and you're like, pro, yeah, I love myself, this, your subconscious mind is trained. If you go out and say to people, I love myself, who here would really do that? Right? Because we're like, oh, we don't want to be seen as vain. We don't want to be seen as you know, narcissistic. And here's the thing. You cannot catch narcissism. It's not contagious. It's literally not. If you don't already have it, you're good. You know? You're good. And you are much more likely to be selfless than selfish, right? How many of you have given and given and given and given and given and given and given until there was nothing else left? Go ahead. Raise your hand. It's OK. Who here has ever compared themselves to other people? Raise your hand. Look around, look around the room. Who here has ever said mean things to themselves in their head? You're not enough. You should be doing better. Who here, when you failed, has walked right up to you and just been like, boom, kicked yourself when you're down? I mean, look around. This is a common experience in our culture. Who here has over, ever overstayed in a relationship, a friendship, a romantic, that wasn't really the relationship that was right for them? These are common experiences. That's not self-love, right? That's not self-love, but you can see why loving ourselves is so, so important. And, and if, you, if I was to say to you, Daniel, don't ever compare yourself again. If I was to say to any of you, you deserve to only be in loving, respectful relationships, period. If I was to say to you that your body is beautiful exactly as it is because God made it that way. If I was to say to you that you're not perfect, you know what? You are perfect all at the same time. If I was to say to you that it's actually insanity to compare yourself because you actually can't be somebody else, would you all agree with me? 
And can you imagine that all the little people that we are growing up right now are growing up with a definition of self-love that says it's conceit, vanity, and narcissism. <laughs> this is called the self-love tree. And this is what I understand self-love to be. Now, you're all activated. You're all thumbs up. You all know that you deserve to love yourself. How do you do it? Self-love, because people are like, love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Like, what does that mean? How do you do that? I think of self-love as a tree, and it has 10 branches on that tree. And it has these beautiful roots, which are your self-worth. You need to give yourself love in all 10 of these areas. All 10 of your branches of self-love need to be blooming and fed and nourished. Part of the challenge is, is that most of us in this culture, we just focus here on self-esteem because it's really valued in our culture. Be confident, know you can be and do and have it all. And what happens is this branch gets so big that it, it shadows the branch of self-compassion. So we end up with like a bunch of high achievers who are hard on ourselves, right? Or it gets so big that it steals from self-pleasure. So we're workaholics who forget how to have fun. And we're like, uh, yeah, I got a lot of money, got a lot of like accolades. Uh, mm, my, my happiness quotient, right? <laughs> and so as you go into your day, and this is actually as you go into your life, because self-love is a practice to consider at any moment where on this tree might you need to have some more love. So is it self-care on that day? Is it about that you really need to be nourishing yourself and giving yourself what you need? Is it self-awareness and self-honesty? Is it self-acceptance, self-trust, self-esteem, self-compassion and forgiveness, self-empowerment, self-expression, self-honor and respect, and self-pleasure? And then the roots of your tree at self-worth. Every year on February 13th, it's the International Day of Self-Love, put it on your calendar, I pick a branch, or actually people all around the world choose one branch, and they say, that's the branch I'm gonna grow this year. Last year for me it was self-pleasure because I was realizing even though, even though I love my work as the queen of self-love and I get to do all these wonderful things, I was joy starved. Like my inner child was like, uh, you're working way too much and I need to have some joy. And so I made a promise to myself, and this is what we do every year on February 13th, is we make one, pick one branch, one promise, and you can do it on any day. It just happens that February 13th is a good day to do it. And I said to myself, okay, here's my promise, no matter what, no matter how much work there is to do, no matter how much I have going on, I will always find time for fun. I will always find time for happiness. And this is where self-love becomes practice. I want you to take it out of the vast esoteric idea of, oh yeah, I should love myself. That's great, you're already there. You already opened up your heart to feel that you deserve the love. Now I want you to take it and practice it, right? So for me, I picked the branch of self-pleasure, which means two weeks ago when I spent the entire day planning a retreat for, four, for 30 women that's going to happen in a couple weeks, I was like, I need to go back home because I have more work to do. I have, a, I have a love tour to plan. Like, I got more work to do. And I said, Christine, you made a promise to yourself. Remember this branch? It's been all dinky and hasn't been getting enough sun. You said, no matter how much, you'll find time for happiness. And I was with two of my best girlfriends. And I said, that was my promise to myself. And so I said, the, the work will wait. And I had dinner with them. We had a couple glasses of wine. We connected. It was beautiful. And I woke up the next day, and guess what? The work was still there, didn't really need to get done the day before, right? That was all in my own consciousness. And so whatever for you is the branch, just consider, just even ask yourself right now, which one of these branches might be the one that's calling you forth most? And today, as you're here today, just notice how you might be able to fill yourself up more in that one area. And then consider taking a promise. Self-love promises are like anchor points. They pull you back in. So in that moment, like for me, when I was like, oh, I got more work to do, it was like, oh no, I made a promise to me. And the thing about self-love that I really want you to remember is that it all really boils down to this, to really be your own best friend, right? It's not that you don't know how to take care of yourselves. You all know that, you know, drink green drinks, go to yoga. You all know not to be in abusive relationships or toxic friendships. You all know that you should get, you know, 10 hours or nine hours or eight hours of sleep. You know that you shouldn't work yourself to death. You know you should feel self-empowered. You know that you should be confident. But in that moment, can you choose love? And that's what we're about here at LoveKind. Can you choose love in that moment for yourself? And it's hard in this culture. But if you can come back to this mantra and you can just ask yourself in that moment when you know you're making a choice that's not in alignment with your highest good, to stop and say to yourself, if I was being my own best friend right now, what would I say? What would I say? 
And if you still can't get there because your inner critic, you know, your inner mean girl, your inner mean dude's going nuts in your head, you stop, you close your eyes, put your hand on your heart, and you say, okay, if I was my own best friend, and you slow down, what would I say to myself? And I promise you, if you slow down, and you put your hands on your heart, love will come up, and you will be able to give yourself permission to do what it is that's the loving act towards yourself. Self-love is the same as love for anyone else. It's just directed in a different way at you. So consider directing love at yourself and being your own best friend for the rest of your life. Thank you.